going on to all my only murders in the building fans out there and welcome back to my channel movie files this is very bittersweet ladies and gentlemen because obviously i'm happy that we're going to finally find out what happened and how things played out but it's unfortunately the last episode of season one but we're breaking it all down here in the spoiler review but before we dive into it all make sure you're checking me out on all my other social media accounts if you all are new to the channel well welcome to the community consider subscribing and hitting that notification bell that way you can get the alert for when i drop new content if you enjoyed this spoiler review of the finale of only murders in the building which was titled open and shut we'll make sure to like and share the video it helps out the channel a lot but also appreciate the support and in those comments as you all have been doing for the last 10 weeks let's talk about this finale your pros your cons did your predictions come true let's talk about the season as a whole your favorite character your favorite episode what were some things that didn't work for you as the show as a whole as the finale as a whole and let's talk about your thoughts and theories of what you hope to see in season two in the comments below so before i even break it all down get into my thoughts and all that i, I I just have to start off by saying thank you all this last 10 weeks has been incredible i knew i was going to enjoy this show but i fell in love with the show just because it is a great show but it was more or less fall in love with the show interacting with you all every like share comment people hitting me up on the dms sharing theories having a good time coming to the show it's been an honor i like i said i knew i was going to like it but i i really love this show i have to say this year two hit surprises for me has been white lotus and this show i again i i knew it had all the makings for something i was going to probably be really engaged with but those two shows come to mind as far as like i did not expect to fall in love with the shows but again i have to thank you all for the continued support this is bittersweet that we're this is the last one of season one but we're getting to season two but of course we're covering more stuff on this channel but again from me to you thank you all for the support so look just quick thoughts on the finale before we break it all down because we have a lot to talk about here I really enjoyed this finale. It, you know, obviously <laughs> we'll talk about uh, as I'll just bring up now. I'm not normally one to say, hey, I, I told you so. I thought it was right. My predictions weren't 100%, but as you all can see on the screen now, all my suspects, and I'm going to go with Umro Numero, number one for me, is Amy Ryan as Jan. Again, whether it's the red dress, whether it's her living two lives, and just seeming so perfect, you know, right? Seeming like she is the perfect fit. I think that, unfortunately, she's going to break Charles' heart because she's going to reveal herself to be the murderer. Now, why she killed him, we'll obviously have to develop that and figure out what were their connections. Was she... It pretty much played into how I thought she was going to be having this double life. And obviously, she had her connections to Tim. And obviously, we'll talk about her reasons why she killed Tim, how she killed Tim. But uh, yeah, to my Jan people out there that didn't think your boy had any merit to blaming or pointing the finger at her, it ended up being Jan. And we're going to talk about it here. But again, I really thought this was a great finale. It sets the stage for a very interesting season two. But I really enjoyed it. But again, let me know your thoughts in the comments. So let's break this finale down. Again, it was titled open and shut as we open the episode up with 23 seconds of Tim having a monologue in regards to him breaking the fourth wall and we getting to hear his story before he died after losing the Hardy Boys he had no one to lean on you know after putting his best friend in jail for not confessing that he wasn't part of Zoe's death he had no one to, to look on to. He had no one to lean on, like I mentioned, but he found someone that shared that type of loneliness, that shared that type of how Jan was alone, how she had a double life, and that, that you know, opposites attract, but they had a lot in common as we see them making out in the elevator, and it's, it's true. Jan and Tim had a relationship, ladies and gentlemen, as we cut to Oliver pointing out, again, I love how meta the show is, pointing out how this is going to be a great finale, and we see them making their way, because they're scared for Charles's life at this point. They want to break the door down, unsuccessful at doing so, as Charles makes his way off the elevator as they tell him, you're sleeping with a murderer. What a great way to open up this great finale, as we see Charles isn't willing to hear this Jan theory. He is tired of hearing all the craziness and that leaves him with going back to his place. And we see that Charles and Mabel are like, well, she's still at the symphony. Let's go in her place and see what she's all about. Leaving the poor old Charles by himself and surprise, surprise, who comes knocking on the door? It's the one and only Jan, ladies and gentlemen, as she comes to the door and she's talking about her apology why she lied about not having the first chair she was beaten out by a child and she's smooth because she makes her way into his place to have some drinks jan plays it very coy very cool perfectly chill as she's talking about the instrument cleaner on the table that they found in tim's place last week and charl and jan they admit their love to one another. And again, it's just like, she's just so perfect. She's so sadistic and so crazy too, as we'll talk about here in a second. But Charles, 
he attempts, you know, he, he talks about his love and says, I would even love you even if you did kill Tim. She's like, oh, I feel very honored by that. And she's like, you know what, let's let's have some more drinks and maybe see where this goes. But then he says, no, I don't want to have any more drinks because he calls her out. There's poison in drinks, which goes back to my theory many, many weeks ago about her being this cook and the poison and the food. And maybe, remember Oliver talking about the, the food that she made? It's always poison with Jan, and that's her expertise in poisoning people. But Charles puts everything on the table in regards to mentioning how how everything kind of played out, how he kind of put two, two and two together, and why did you kill Tim, and why did you kill the cat as well as she just... She breaks. She just finally says, okay, you know what? Let me show you who I really am. And she goes into her story and we see what why the cat was poisoned. It licked, and I think a lot of us pretty much probably assume that it was just the cat picking up the after effects of the poison. And we see that the cat licked the blood of Tim Kono, and, which was obviously gross. <laughs> but either way, we see that she is just so excited to let it all out. And it's all laid out for us, ladies and gentlemen. It was Jan. She had a relationship with Tim. As she gets into more details that Tim was the one that broke up with her. And we see how it all played out as Charles notices how he was able to put the pieces of the puzzle together because of the J's. All those letters, all those stuff that we found, the dog, the letter on Jan's door. And yes, we can go back to Jan being crazy. She was the one that stabbed her own self, which is very, if you all have seen one of my favorite slashes of all time, Scream. It's a very <laughs> situation when they cut each other to make it seem that they weren't going to be killers again jan is crazy ladies and gentlemen but let's go back to it and, and again i'm going to play a quick little clip from my episode four review it's in the detail ladies and gentlemen especially when it comes to who is the suspect and this is going to my thoughts on jan being one of our suspects as she is on this date with Charles, which was hilarious, by the way. Notice the story that she tells him in regards to her living two lives as a kid, her childhood of you know being with her dad, not being with her mom, and being always second to her sister. And her. And this just goes into what I was saying in that clip in regards to her living those double lives and her having that jealousy as she thought that Tim was seeing someone else as he got that ring, which we'll talk about that ring here in a second, but she finds the ring that obviously our crew discovered. Meanwhile, Mabel and Oliver are are in her place finding out all the belongings to attach her to this crime but let's go back to my boy Charles who has somewhat he's prepared he wakes up because Jan thinks that he is dead at this point but he recorded the entire conversation he's not dead He's not going to be dying, but it's just funny as he's playing, you know, he tries to go and stop the recording. He plays a Sting song, which is obviously a callback to Sting being in the show. And I have to say it right now. The commitment by the legend, Steve Martin himself, as he's doing his best like uh, impersonation of Leonardo DiCaprio in The Wolf of Wall Street when he can't walk or talk and he's just on the ground, elevator hitting him. That just shows you the commitment that this legend, I repeat, legend in comedy, Steve Martin on the ground doing some body comedy. I love that scene. It was, it, by the way, it was just so funny as he makes his way into the elevator. Bunny's on the elevator. People are getting on the elevator and they're just like, oh, he's he's having a bender. Since he's getting thrown out, he's going on a, on a trail in. And they mentioned Sting had a bit of an issue when he broke up with the police. It was just, again, I say it every single week. But the comedy is so organic and so natural to this show. But let's go back to Mabel and Oliver finding Charles as Jan is poisoning the entire building with carbon monoxide in the ventilation. They make their way down there. They connect. They disconnect the ventilation. But that leaves Jan coming to confront them with a gun. Very old school clue type of situation whenever the murderer results to their thing being blown up. They always come in with their gun thinking that's gonna be the easy solution, which by the way, Jan's like way of killing the whole building, again, what a crazy individual, and Amy Ryan was great for this role, by the way. But they take her out. You know, we see Mabel punches her with the ring, which is a great little call back there, uh, which, again, is just such a, a – this show was just so well put together. And it's going to be great to kind of rewatch this and kind of put – see all the different references and the Easter eggs and all that. But they knock her out, uh, saving everyone in the building, which, you know, kind of wrapping up the episode here. We see that Oliver and his son and his dog are all hanging out, and they're in a good spot. We see that Oscar's name has been cleared and him and Mabel seem to be on good terms. Charles alone, unfortunately, again. But he decides to put himself out there. He reaches out to a Lucy who he 
hasn't talked to him forever. And then at first she didn't think that she was going to respond. And she ultimately did. She responded by saying, hey, but I love this quote here as we wrap up the episode. A connection was made amongst three strangers willing to embrace their messiness and realizing they're all connected. And it started with knowing who is Tim Kono, but they mentioned we are all Tim Kono, which is like a Venom theme, right? We are Venom or we are Tim Kono. But I love that message there in regards to just three different people, three different points in their lives, all kind of, again, having messy lives, being alone, not having anyone to kind of lean on. And it just kind of speaks to this community as well as what this show has created. It's a fun show. It has comedy beats, some legends in comedy. Selena Gomez was great. It's a murder mystery, but it's also just the community that this show was able to build. So again, I talk about how meta this show is. That's a great meta moment because we are Tim Kono. We are this show. And again, I'm really happy to be part of this community as I should a tear and get a little bit emotional with you all. But moving on, we end with our crew on the rooftop as Mabel makes her way downstairs to get some more champagne. Charles and Oliver, they get a message to leave the building, and you all remember the first scene in episode one where we finally see it come into fruition. The person in a tie-dye hoodie, which Mabel was standing over, and they are dead, is no other than Bunny, the head of the HOA. She's been killed by Mabel's uh, knitting needle, and the cops come in with our crew. Detective William is telling our crew not to say anything as everyone's giving them the look of shame, and this fall, coming this fall only murderers in the building but that leaves us with the big question who killed bunny <laughs> who killed bunny ladies and gentlemen because as mabel said she walked in with that already in her chest obviously leaving the ed- evidence making it seem like it was mabel but who was it that text charles and oliver about the incident at hand uh in regards to getting them into the situation who is this person as Mabel said on the rooftop, there feels like there's some loose ties. I personally think, you know, and this kind of goes into my thoughts of what a season two can look like in regards to getting our crew, uh, you know, not being framed for murder. I think it goes back to that, you know, Theo and his father's situation, because I would imagine their whole operation just couldn't be a, a two-man crew. I believe that there's probably someone, the angel, his great his grandmother, maybe a family member, maybe someone that was attached to it. They are taking revenge of their their whole center kit, uh, black market, black jewelry market being uh, torn down. They're probably getting their revenge on our crew. So again, I don't think it's a character we've met yet, but I think it might have some ties to Theo and his father and the court and the whole system and all the stuff that they had going on there. Outside of that, I can't really think of anyone else that would want revenge on our crew that of a, of a character that we met this season. So I do think that it attaches to characters that we've seen, and I can just see it now, them going into the same jail maybe and talking to Theo and his father and trying to figure out who set them up. That could be something to look forward to. But uh, yeah, I can't wait to see what season two has up his sleeve. What new characters will we meet? How will our crew find out how they were framed for the murder of Bunny? It's just so much to look forward to, and I can't wait. Hopefully, it comes sooner rather than later, because obviously, Selena Gomez is a mega star with not only uh, seeing her in TV shows and movies, but she's obviously an artist, so she has her own career. Steve Martin and Martin Short, they're still, you know, they're still busy. They do things here and there, but I hope that we can get a season two, hopefully, fingers crossed, by next year. We'll see, but nonetheless, just my overall thoughts of the season. It was fantastic. I knew I was going to like it. I ended up loving it. Um, I have to say that I was just very impressed. I already knew Steve Martin and Morton Short were going to bring their A game. But for someone that... I'm not going to lie. I, every time I've seen Selena Gomez in movies, I'd never really thought that she was, I never thought she was bad, but I never thought that she stood out. I was very impressed by her in this show. And I thought that all three of them had incredible chemistry. I thought, like I mentioned throughout the entire reviews, the comedy felt so natural. The mystery was there. The fun was there, but more importantly, the community was there. And again, I can't thank you all enough for supporting these videos. This is the last one for now. We'll be back for season two, of course. But in the meantime, check out my coverage for HBO shows. Like we got Secession season three, covering things on Apple TV, like Foundation. We got many more things coming with other TV shows coming this fall. Of course, I do my movie reviews. So this isn't the last of Movie Files. We always pump out new content every other day or every day, it seems like at this point. So definitely stick around on the channel to see what I have up its sleeve. But again, thank you all for watching this review. Leave your thoughts, your pros, your cons, your 
favorite characters, your favorite episodes, your thoughts, your theories for season two. Let's talk about it in the comments. Before you leave, make sure to like the video, share the video, leave your thoughts in the comments section, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, hit the bell, that way you don't miss any other content. Hope you all enjoyed this review. Hope you're staying safe. As you can see on the screen now, subscribe to my channel, check out my other content. We'll see you in the next video. Thank mm -hmm. you.